I'm a little ambivalent about this, and I will tell you why. This is the Cat 22 skin, and it was created by a Korean content creator whose name, at least the translation of his name, is Baekdu Mountain Nyong. Now, I'm not quite sure what that means. But um, I found this skin through the SI forums. Now, someone else had taken the skin, downloaded it, changed it, made a few you know, made a few changes behind the scenes, then uploaded it under their own name, available for download. I'm not doing that. I emailed the creator. I didn't email the creator. I got a hold of him through the website. Um, if you search Cat Skin 22 or Cat 22 Skin, it'll take you to the website. And said, look, you know, I love this skin. I like to use it. I just need to change some things in it so I can use it better. I won't attach my name to it. If anybody asks me about it, I'll direct them to the website. Um, this, this is a great skin. Uh, the creator put a lot of time and effort into it. One of the things I love about this skin is the player screen here. There's a ton of information. But one of the things I absolutely love about it is this right here. This is the record. Now, this is a container within a container within, or is a widget within a container within a container, I think. I've started, just because I had to go around and start modifying some of this, I'm learning a lot more about skinning than I originally wanted to. And to be fair, I really didn't want to because I've mentioned it before. I am not a coder by any stretch of the imagination. I'm at that age where... Coding was really kind of hard to get into uh, early 90s. You had to want to be an engineer or a computer engineer of some sort to get into coding, and I didn't. And then in the early 2000s, when when languages like C and C Sharp and things like that started becoming more readily usable, I just I wasn't interested in it. I, I tried learning it, and it's just not for me. I know some Python. I know a decent amount of SQL. And that's just because of my job-related stuff. But, you know, frankly, if aliens showed up and said, hey... The fate of humanity depends on me coding something in Perl or C Sharp or something like that. Just bend over, grab your ankles, kiss your ass goodbye. It's not happening. But the skin creators that are out there, they do some amazing work. They do some amazing things. And the creator for this skin, who I'm just going to call uh, Bakedu, and I'm totally pronouncing that wrong. I'm looking at his name here. Bakedu uh, did a fantastic job. Uh, one of the things I love is... You have the screen, you have the containers inside the container, inside of a container here, so you get a lot more information. There's a lot of things that you can uh, go through. One of the things I love, this is his recent, these are his recent matches. Here's your form. Here's his feedback from it. And that's just the assistant coach, but you have the form here. Over here, you have how he stacks up against the rest of the Premier League at a particular point in time. You can also go around and, uh, do some other things here. Now, it does have some CA and PA numbers, but the thing is, and this is something that, that I also liked. Um, let me change this back here real quick. Uh, this was data analysis. The thing I liked about it was if I go to hidden, it's just going to show me his current ability. And this is actually one of the things I've been working on the past day and a half. I have to go into the XML file and change this out. So... It says it in English. Now, if it weren't for Astrogref, which is a program that would actually look for words inside of files, I'd be up a creek without that. Um, but essentially what you're doing is you edit the XML file, you replace this with current ability, and then clear, you know, save the file, clear your cache, upload it, and the Hangul uh, gets replaced with the English. Um, you can see here, like I left the S off pass. Um, and then there's some, there's some, spacing there's some choices you have to make for spacing reasons and things like that that's why a lot of this here is going to be cut off but once you start experimenting with it uh, you can see that there's a ton of information here it is right at your fingertips and it's just it's great for for an information junkie like me it's great the other thing i love about this skin i gotta go back here I saved the game before we got here. So when it shows, you know what, will it, do, will it show here? So this is the progress. Um, this here's a pop-up. So like that there, I have to replace um, with, the, with the translation. But this shows his progress and how he's improved. And then um, if I want to look at this, I can say, hey, 
Here was his numbers from 12 years ago. And this is actually really kind of cool. Now, there's a way to do this in the scout in, in the in the screen, and I don't remember how to do it off the top of my head. But like, if we look at him 12 months ago, we can see his stamina's gone up by his one, his jumping reach has gone up by one, his vision's gone up by one, everything else has gone up. But what that means is that it's gone up from like 15.3 to 15.7 sort of thing. And if we look at him when he was 20 years old, we can see how much he's really improved, especially physically. So, and, you know, his anticipation's gone up, his concentration, decision-making's gone up. That's really, really cool. If we look at all time, we can kind of see what's going on, going on there. Now, this is going to be quite handy in my next save. This here is the club page. It's very, very cool. It has me over here on the right, The how we've done the past couple of seasons over here. Some of the interesting stuff going on here, so on and so forth. These are the uniforms I've created for this season. I really like them. I like this. This, this is home. This is away. This is third. I kind of actually like the third kit, although the the, the away kit's very very nice too. Uh, the only drawback with the home kit is that I kept the pants black as well, and that is uh, a little bit of a bummer. Stuff like this, where the where the where the words aren't fitting in the button, that's a font size issue, and you either have to abbreviate something or figure out what the heck is going on there for as much as, you know, and things like this, I just have to go back and, and, and fix as well. Um, you know, for as much as I quibble about some of the other skins, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that I'm not willing to put the time and effort to fix them, to make them workable for me because there's other things about them that I also don't like. Whereas with this one here, it's just absolutely amazing. I'll be honest. I haven't seen this before. If I click this, what happens? Okay, I have no idea what that is, but we'll leave it there. I don't want to take it out. Finance-wise, we're doing well. We have $177 million in the transfer budget. We have, we're spending two point five in the payroll. We've got two point eight available. Uh, transfer window-wise, it's been really quiet. One of the things that happened was I sat down this morning at like 9 o'clock and started going through the roster just to see um, what I could do to improve the squad. And frankly, there wasn't anyone out there I was willing to spend money on that I thought could make us better, at least significantly better. Now, there were some guys out there. They were also older, too. Um, and I'm still trying to abide by the team rules of not signing players over 30. So uh, if we look at the outs, we've sold $85 million, But $70 million of that was Fatubu, whose loan at um, Juve turned, uh, you know, they exercised the option. Uh, Christian Canales, who was kind of lost in the shuffle, went to Sevilla for $13.25 million. Nathan Ferguson went to Krasnodar for $1.2 million. Kyan Clark was a youth player, went to Stoke for $115, going to $135. Chris McCaskill, Ray Metz, Kevin Nelson all left on a free. And then Ayub Gedek, John O'KK, Tyrell Harding, Alex Webb, Leo King, Jamie Bonner, and Ben Elliott all went out on loan. Um, the one I kind of went back and forth on was the Gedek one because he is a very good striker, but I've got a ton of striker depth, but I want him getting first team playing time. And he is at Nottingham Forest. They are a championship team. They're a, they're, they're a pretty good championship team. And I think, um, he will definitely do a job there. Now I'm going to go back to him real quick. If we look at his season stats, uh, actually, no, I need to go to his history. If we look at his season stats, he was at Nottingham Forest last year. He had 41 appearances, 10 goals, and assisted player of the match at 6.77. So he has consistently gotten better since we got since we brought him him from Alton Ordeal. If for whatever reason he doesn't pan out here, and frankly, I don't know what's going to happen. This is my last season here. You know, it's the seventh season of the save. It's Champions League or bust because we've won the Prem twice now. You know, I will. Um, you know, I'll. I'll, I'll save the save offline just for, for personal use. But then what I like to do is sim out three and seven years. And it's possible he can move on to another team. They're valuing him at anywhere from 28 to 32 million. And I'm stacked at striker. So it's possible he could stay and they can move some of the other guys. Or who knows? I love this option. This is totally cool. So back to the transfers. The only players we brought in have been youth players because my lack of youth depth was... I mean, I have a lot of youth players, but they're not all great. And some of the ones that weren't great, I would probably let go in the January transfer window. But as an example, Miguel Aziz is 24 years old. I brought him in as backup for the midfielder. Um, he's probably not going to get a lot of playing time. 
but I was also in the impression that Connor Gallagher was leaving. There's there's a guy who's just totally hacking me off. Barry Meeling is a youth player. Uh, he's here for under 18 death more than anything else. And then Nicholas Jackson is also here as player depth on the under 18 squad. Uh, Connor Gallagher was upset last season that I didn't play him in the position he wanted. And so I said, look, you know, you had a really good season for us last season. Why are you complaining? And he's like, well, I, you know, I'm complaining because I can't complain. I like, okay, well, fine, I'll move you. Um, I put him out there for loan. No one came sniffing after him. I put him out there for loan and offered to pay half his salary. And every team that he, let me rephrase that, every team that made an offer for him, he refused a contract with. And it's like, dude, you, you want to leave? I'm doing everything I can to make you leave. And yet you're the one who isn't, signing the contracts to leave what gives so that's just one of those things uh, a couple of players have come back um i just recalled one and we'll have to take a look at him when he does show up uh crystal lovac or art Guler is here uh he's two star current ability two and a half star potential ability but he's here for depth at the midfield position And then chances are I will probably move him on in the January transfer window, depending on how things are looking. Oh, I'm on the wrong thing. Yeah, Gula is one of the ones who will probably, Gula rather, is probably one of the ones who will leave in the January transfer window. Um, who else? I know we brought in a couple of guys. Did this show up last season? I still haven't quite figured this out. You know, I, I bring a player in and sometimes they show up on one transfer window and not the other. Yeah, he showed up on last season's transfer window. I'm not quite sure why. Juan Pablo Valdez is a Mexican international my scout found. And I got him last year for $24.5 million. He was the one that I originally made an offer for him. The club said, yeah, but let us find a replacement. And they didn't find a replacement. And so I didn't get him. And then I turned around and said, here's $24.5 million. That's what I agreed to pay for him last season, going up to like twenty eight. I want to say, based on international appearances, which I'll probably pay, which isn't a problem. I mean, I've got $177 million. So it's no big deal. Um, I just realized my microphone was turned all the way up. Sorry about that. Um, so I, I turned back around and said, okay, look, here's your 24 and a half going into 28. And uh, if you try telling me you want to sign another player first, I'm going to say no. But what I did agree was a loan back for last season. And last season he did okay. I wish there was an option to go back a year. That would probably be a little bit too much, though. But he is here. He is going to be part of the midfield rotation. Or he is going to be part of the defensive back rotation. Uh, I had a couple of players who expressed interest in leaving. Connor Gallagher being the biggest one. And he just... I got him out there on loan. I've listed him for loan as well. At this point, I'm tempted just to sit him on the bench. And he can contribute from there. Uh, we went to China for training, and we played St. Etienne and Montpellier because they were also training in China. Um, it was a good preseason. No injuries to speak of. against the, In the Community Shield against Man City, we beat them 3-1. Doku a goal. Sola brace a goal. Zanolio got a goal in the 23rd minute. Uh, Joel Tizier got injured. Uh, Sola got injured as well, but he had a really good game. We drew against Newcastle. This was an interesting game. It was one of those where we had a lot of shots, and... A decent amount on target. I mean, our passing was really good. This is the other thing I like about this is it's got our heat map right here and it's got our passing map right here too, which is very, very cool. Um, we held them to 13 and three. Our XG was 1.7. Theirs was 0.92. And for some reason, we just, we, we couldn't get it done. And Newcastle is still spending money like it's water. So, you know, I, I guess that's an okay result. Against Brighton, we beat them 1-0. Uh, thanks to a solo goal in the 50th minute. Uh, the other thing that happened, and it's kind of odd, is that our membership fees are down this season because one of our stands is closed off due to the expansion. So we didn't sell as many season tickets as we could have. So the board was kind of upset about that. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to play Norwich. But before that, we have our Champions League group stage draw. 
Now we should be in the first pot. We are in the first pot because we were English and we finished first in the prem. If that doesn't put us in the first pot, I would be highly, highly surprised. So let's get this underway. We're in Group H. So Group A is Milan. Group B is PSG. Group C is Bayern. Group D is Man United. Group E is West Ham. Group F is Benfica. And Group G is Real Madrid. RB Leipzig goes to Group A. Juve goes to Group B. Ajax goes to Group C. Porto goes to Group D. Inter goes to Group E. Borussia Dortmund goes to Group F. Man City goes to Group G. VFL Wolfsburg goes to Group H. Barcelona goes to Group A. Partizan goes to Group B. Olympiacos goes to Group C. RB Salzburg goes to Group D. Monaco to Group E. PSV to Group F. Atalanta to Group G. And we get Atletico Madrid in Group H. Rounding out Group A is Tottenham. Rounding out Group B is Galatasaray. Shakhtar rounds out Group C. Norgeland rounds out Group D. Athletic Bilbao rounds out Group E. Cisco Moscow rounds out Group F. Celtic rounds out Group G, which means Lille is going to be the last team in Group H. This is a very interesting group. Wolfsburg finished fourth last season. Atletico Madrid, I still have Jan Oblak and Koke, finished second in La Liga. Okay. And then Lille probably finished third. Yeah, they finished third in Ligue 1 last year. They still have Kakare. Jonathan David is their vice captain. Arnold Calamundo is their key player. Yeah, I'd say he's a very good striker. 20 goals last season. 7.28. Got him from PSG. First on loan and then signed him. And if you're not good for PSG, but you can do that at Lille, you're doing something right. We have the Carabao Cup draw too. We're playing Newcastle in the third round. I think I mentioned that. And a tough group. I like our chances though. So what I'm going to do here is set up the uh, training. We'll do the press conference in that offline and then we'll come back for the norwich game because i want to show you guys what happens with the tactics screen and stuff like that too so back in just a bit i'm just going to keep pointing out stuff like this so this is a loan let me go back here so this is a loan list notification which i absolutely love because it's got the player it has everything going on with him uh it has his attributes here you can click here for a scouting report, his medical, position and role, an analyst report if there is one. I don't know what this is. This is season stats. I have to go into the XML and change this. I just don't know which XML it is. Um, and then like this, I had to change yesterday. I have to figure some of that out as well. But I'm, uh, I'm okay doing that. And stuff like this that's minor at the moment. That's just a matter of moving some stuff down. So, you know what? We'll get this out of the way here. So it does come with a background selector. The one thing I did have to do, this, okay, pause right here. I absolutely love this. This is the screen flow. And it's different than the normal screen flow in that it doesn't have, you know, the, uh, the, the screen flow on the base skin in that has like the one container here and then the eight boxes down here that always change no matter what you do and go back in and set them. This skin doesn't like as an example this is the english under 23 premier division two um statistics at the moment and because we're playing in there that's why art is at the top but one of the things it does is here's the average rating and it lists um particular attributes for that role that kind of make you say okay cool that might be worth looking at it's so like you know if i'm looking at the portuguese league and there's a guy who has four goals but his finishing is 15 to 20 heck yeah i'm gonna scout him but this doesn't change. I set all of this up when, when, I, when I saw the first screen a couple of days ago, and it has not changed. And I absolutely love that because this is what I'm looking at when it comes to, hey, what players should I be looking at? What players should I be scouting? And sometimes you'll see the same name appearing more than once. So Kufi, Coffee, Coffee, um, Kua, Coffee, uh, appear, he's first in tackles in 90 minutes. He's third. In headers one. Uh, I'm not looking for conversion rate, cross completion. He doesn't show up there, but that's probably because he is more of a defensive center back. And he's only back in that on the right. But he's 29 years old. 
He's got some good uh, attributes. If I was looking for a backup, he might be someone I'd be looking for. I'm looking for a way to disable the hidden button here. I gotta go online to the form to figure that out. I don't. I don't like that. I don't like playing with with visible potential ability, visible current ability. I'm kind of okay with because you still don't know what their potential ability is. I mean, you can kind of guess depending on their star rating and stuff like that. But even then, that still feels like kind of a cheat to me. But like I said, for the moment, I'm willing to overlook it. As an example, it changed the Northern Ireland Football League Premiership Development League. And if you'll notice, none of this changed. It's absolutely amazing. For someone like me who plays with literally, what was it, 70 screen flow screens, depending on how many competitions I'm loading up, it's absolutely fabulous. There's some other things I wouldn't mind changing, like the background on this here. Uh, there are a couple other skins who have like the uh, team logo kind of blown up so it occupies the whole thing and the name in the center. But again, that's a quibble. Oh, yeah, we'll look at this here in a second too. So one of the players, I, I feel kind of bad about this. And I really don't. But part of me really does because it was kind of a dick thing to do. This is uh, Lee Ojin. Um, Korea, the family name comes first. The first name comes second. So... In America, he'd be Ojin Lee, but it's Lee Ojin. He is a South Korean wonder kid, my East Asian scout found. 18 international appearances, one goal. He is a ball-winning midfielder. He is absolutely fabulous. And I feel comfortable in that if I was to play this save long-term, and I'm going to offline. It's just going to be my personal save offline. He could be a very good deep-line playmaker. I would probably keep him as a ball-winning midfielder, although I'm looking at a Mazala as well. I think he would do really good there, especially if his dribbling came up, and it looks like it is. Now, he was at Jean Book. I signed him last season, and I loaned him back because I wanted him to get first-team playing time. And the K-League is not a bad league in terms of competition or anything like that. I think the competition he played against there was easily on par with, you know, if I'd loaned him to Coventry or maybe even so show. However... Their schedule runs different than the English schedule. Now, at the moment, John Book is seven points ahead of their closest competitor. And the season ends December 12th, which means they have two, four, five games. They have five league games left, and they're seven points up. The transfer window, the English transfer window, is closing in two days. If I did not recall him before the close of the transfer window, he would not be able to play for us until the January transfer window. And I don't want that. I would much rather have him here. So I recalled him with five games left. And frankly, if jong falls down to second place, they can totally blame me for that. I'm okay with that. So one of the things I am going to be doing in the next save is I'll be downloading the... Um, Zgen pack and there's a way to get it done for staff as well which should be pretty cool so i think the faces are a lot improved this year um some of them still look kind of funny and then you have situations like this where there is a photo of him but i just don't have it downloaded so we've got norwich and then it's international duty so valdez got called up tizier got called up Leo Jin got called up. I'm pretty sure Grigor Ass and a couple others are going to get called up as well. West Brom or West Ham ended up winning the Euro Cup last year, and Milan won the Champions League. This is the other thing I like. You can kind of see it down here. European Champions Cup, third in Group H, possible finish first and fourth. And as the season goes on, this recalculates. It's part of the XML. There's a, there's a way to do calculations in, in the XML file that if I could figure out how to do it, that would be absolutely fabulous as well. So, and then those were, these are my uh, players who are out on loan. I just, I really love this screen. There's a lot going on here, but there's a lot to like about this as well. Especially if you're an information junkie like me. So I'm, I'm slowly setting up my next save. It's going to be probably about a week in between the end of this save and the start of the next save. And that's just in real world time between the videos in, 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 or that's rather that's in YouTube time, just between the videos. It's going to be about a week in real world times. I will probably have this season finished up sometime right 
after the new year. Uh, this is currently episode 51, and I think I just posted 22 on the YouTube channel, so I'm 30, se I'm 30 episodes ahead. I'm fully five seasons ahead. Uh, and that's just the way it goes sometimes. I mean, sometimes you sit down and it's like, okay, we're going to crank out a season and a half, and you don't realize it until it's four in the morning, and you're thinking, just one more click. The one thing I did have to add to this skin was an instant result. The um, original creator of the skin did not include an instant result, and that was just a matter of downloading the WannaChup skin and copying the appropriate XML files over from that skin to this skin here. So like some of this stuff here, I definitely have to go in and change. Some of it is self-explanatory. Some of it you can kind of figure out for yourself. The color scheme on the hearts is slightly different as well. This light blue like this means they're at 100%. Tonali's wanted, but no one's made an offer for him. Zagadu was wanted by Chelsea, and he was wanted by Barcelona. And so that's also one of the reasons I, I brought on Valdez last year, was he had like four or five big teams coming after him. Crystal Lovkov qualified for his work permit, but he's injured. He's out for another couple weeks. Um, Jair, I called, I didn't loan out again this time as well because I want to get him playing time in the events midfield. Got El Shiwi, Connie DeWinter, and Admiral there for Laird. Why is Laird on the left? Laird should be on the right. Polito can go here for Admiral. So this is the team we're going to be using today. It's going to be Bari and goal. Adam Arola, Zagadu, Grigorash, and Laird is the defensive back four. Stockbridge, Rishi, and Tonali is the midfielders. Esposito is the attack midfielder. Sola and Doku up top as the strikers. Analysis-wise, we're doing okay there. Uh, if we click this, those were the, that was their ratings the last game. We click this. That's how familiar they are tactically. I don't know why Stockbridge is only at half. This is the same formation he's been playing for the past three years now. This is pretty cool. I don't know how he did it, but it's very, very cool. I find it perfect. It's little things like this that I find really cool. So we're going to kick off here. Now, I'm going to pause this here real quick. There's a lot going on here, but the things I want to point out are down here. This button here called pop-up. Well, okay, there's a quick sub button. There's your tactics button. Here's your other subs. You have them on the bench sort of thing. Those are you guys on the field. Here's your tablet. Here's your drop down. So here's the formation. There's our formation. You also have it here. Um, you have the player stats here. And the, I like it because it has the percentages. Uh, you have the Norwich stats here. You have the league table here. Your match stats and everything here. This is going to be your passing. This here is going to be your passing, your, your, uh, your passes in the game. Your scoreboard up top, last five, last five, pause, so on and so forth. Um, I'd have to check, I believe. Yeah, there's an instant result button in-game as well, which I thought was interesting. If you click up here, you get all the teams and, and things like that. We're going to go back and click on the on the field. We're going to get this underway. Don't know what quite what's going on here. Okay, that took a little bit of doing. Um, we have one of the stands under construction. That's what this big gray thing is. But this here, remember FM18 and FM19 before they took all that stuff away? Bakedu has figured out how to add those windows back on the match screen if you want them. Now, the only drawback, and it is a little bit of a drawback, is that at the moment, the vast majority of them are all transparent, but still. This is very, very cool. And a little radar button there and everything like that. I just, the, I about fell out of my chair when I saw that. Stockbridge, Terici, Esposito takes a shot. Urson makes a nice save and Abelando just kicks it out of bounds. Selic, Tomieta to Hall. To Zayic, Mala, back to Hall. Or Halil, rather. Amieta to Selich. Ricci, Admirola just kicks it away, but Shimkiss ends up with it. Thought I clicked something over on OBS. Grigoras to Laird. Laird up to Doku. Doku up to Sola, who scores. That was nice. Uh, 
A very nice assist by Doku. I think what we may do... Yep, I'm going to call it here. Yeah, he's on sides. It was close, but he was on sides. I think what we're going to do is... Reverse it. And that way, we're not... Blocked by them. Cesar, Omarola, back to Cesar. And they get one back. That was a nice shot. Cesar just turned around and curled it in, upper left. The other thing I like about this skin, and I don't know why they took it off the main skin, is the timeline here. Man, no highlights this second half. We're just short. You know what? And I say that and they do that. We're just short of 60 minutes. Emerald is having a bad game. We're going to bring on De Winter. That's the only change we're going to make for the moment. Doku, corner kick in, and it's headed high and left by Gregorx. Laird, Tonali. Crosses it in. Toku's there. Urson, a very nice save. I agree with the commentator. He should have scored off of that. Doku, corner kick. Zagadu, oh, knocked away. Knocked away again, and that is the highlight. Grim move Stockbridge over to Ricci. Take Ricci off and bring on Gallagher. And the other thing we're going to do is... We're going to widen our attack. 15 shots, 12 on target. Our XG is only 1.67. I find that hard to believe. Tonali sends it in, knocked away. Zayic. Tamala. Out to Almeida. Crossed in. DeWinner knocks it away. Selic, Selic rather. To Niakate. Oh, that dispossesses him. Doku up to Sola. Oh, that was nice. He's got five goals already. We'll take a look at Laird here in just a second, saying he's a bit gassed. Yeah, Laird's down at 62%. Okay, we'll make the change there. So we'll bring Laird off and bring on Polito, who actually started last season or last match and was part of the team of the week. So the other thing you'll notice is in the corner here, it's a number. This is from the Gunzo skins. You guys, some of you may be familiar with that. That's how good they are at that particular position. So a star means they're really good, and then everything else is eight out of ten. De Winter. To Sola, back to Stockbridge, over to Tonali. Tonali up to Doku. Doku loses the ball. He tried dribbling and kicked it too far. Grigras heads it. Polito fights with Niakate, loses out. Aldrissetti gets it back to Niakate. Mala. Alderetti, rather. Avalando, Mala, Zayic. Niakate down to Cesar. Cesar, oh, he's lost in the crowd. Polito stops it from going out of bounds. Driving forward, up to Esposito. Esposito. Oh, feeds Sola, who gets his hat trick. Urson got a hand on it, but it wasn't enough. Oh, he was offsides. Sure, this one they're calling him offsides. Okay. Doku with a corner kick. Knocked away, but he's going to run. Doku's going to run it down. Gets it to Stockbridge. Stockbridge to Gallagher. Gallagher up towards Sola. Right at Urson, though. It was a weak header. Urson just bombs it forward. Oh, Gregor Asmus played it. Zayich was there. Oh, Bari. A very nice save. Rolls it out. 
Polito a long kick. That was a quick counterattack that went nowhere, but still, that was a nice save by Barre. Come on, let's hold it, guys. Nikate. Solace. Zayish to Cesar. Cesar back to Niakate. Solace broke through. Bari was too far over. He was protecting the near post too much. And they claw the drawback in extra time. That is a bit of a bummer. Despite 17 shots, 13 on target, and XG 1.93. No woodwork hits. One clear cut chance, three half chances. Only three long shots. That's nice. They had the possession advantage, but it wasn't all that bad we'll click the analytical data it's going to take us to this screen here then we can have a bunch of fun with this or we can go to the teams or we can go to the players likewise we can go here for the player statistics that wasn't bad admiral had a bad game oh wow well. Continue here. We got our registration coming up. I'll take a look at the schedule here real quick because we're going to be back fairly shortly. Well, not fairly shortly, but we got our Champions League group starting up really soon. 93rd minute goal. Jesus Marimba. Gromov. C minus. Somehow, and I wasn't aware of this. Because I don't remember seeing a message on it. I had six new scouts assigned to me. Don't know why. The coaching staff seems to have not been expanded or anything like that. The under-23s are still at 8. And the under-18s are still at 10. And we're still at 21, which is fine. But I was checking last season. All of a sudden, I had six empty scout, scout positions. It's like, oh, 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 okay. So, and that's actually one of the things we'll look at in the last episode is the improvements in the scouts and things like that. So, uh, so oh, you know what? We got to save this real quick. So we're going to skip the first little game and we're going to come back for Newcastle and the Carabao and Wolfsburg. And then we'll probably skip all of October, come back for Atletico Madrid and West Ham, although... Our Carabao match, assuming we get past Wolfsburg or uh, Newcastle, our Carabao match should be in October, near the end of October. So, assuming we get past Newcastle, a big assumption, yes, I know. That game is going to be between Wolves and Southampton. So, what we'll do is play that and then Atletico Madrid. And then come back and do like Chelsea Lil or something around that area there. We'll figure it out. So I know there's some downloads I can put in to change this screen here. The, the, that's just the generic stadium photo um, on the skinning forum. On uh, the SI site, someone had uh, some new XMLs to change the affiliates like such. So I just, I also know that um, there's some photos I'm going to need to download, but we'll probably take care of that next save as well. So we've uh, got our work cut out for us this year. Literally, it's Champions League or bust. You know, and if for whatever reason we get knocked out of the Champions League, I'll still finish out the season. If we get down to the Europa League, we'll do our best to win that as well. That goes without saying, but it's, it's literally Champions League or bust. I think we have a very capable squad. I think we have a good squad. It has a decent amount of depth. I've got good players in every position. About the only one I am kind of sorry to worry about is, is Medibare, but I didn't see any keepers out there that I would much rather have. And in his defense, he's improving. So... We're going to live and die by Medi Bari, I guess. And I think for every great save he has, he's going to have another save. He's going to have another one where he should have saved, but he quite wasn't able to pull it off. But I think 
We have a really good chance this year. We're really strong up top. Solo's now four-star potential out of five-star current. While Paulo Valdez comes in as a three-star current, five-star potential defensive center back. Clark is still two and a half. This is, okay, okay, so we're going to look at Solo here real quick. Okay, and now we're going to compare him to Clark. So Clark's a better defender, a little bit better mentally, a little bit better technically. Solo's better aerially, physically, speed, vision, and attacking-wise. If we look at the attributes, it really kind of goes back and forth. Okay, Clark's a little bit better technically, Solo's better mentally, and he's better physically. Solo's four stars, Clark is two and a half. I can't explain that. So I'm not even going to try. Um, I'm really looking forward to this season. I really am. I think we have a really good chance of going far, assuming I don't do anything to screw it up. So... You know, that said, we're, we're going to do what we can to make sure that happens. If you did like what you've seen and heard, please have a like, subscribe to the channel for more content. I'd be interested in your feedback in the transfer window. Should I should I made a move for a more seasoned goalkeeper? Should I brought in someone to take someone else's position? The only other position I was looking at possibly was advanced midfielder. But Esposito started there most of the season last season, and he led the team in goals. So I think what I'm going to run into is a situation where I'm not going to have a best 11. I'm going to have like a best 18. And of that 18, probably seven or eight players are going to stay pretty much the same throughout the season. So hopefully that's not going to screw things up too badly. But we're off to a good start. Jose Basola is off to a great start. And I'm really looking for the chances. So I'm going to spend more time tinkering with this skin off my YouTube. So as I was mentioning earlier, if you did like what you've seen in here, please give a like, subscribe to the channel for more content, questions, criticism, comments. Leave those down below. I will post those as fast as I can. My name is FM Jellico. I thank you for watching.